Hello, welcome back to another Impact Wrestling review at the Impact Lounge. I'm your host today, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro the Great. Hello, Ro. Hello, Adam. How's it going, man? Yeah, good. Uh, I mean, it's not as exciting over here in the UK as it is over on, in Super Bowl Fever Sunday there in uh, in the US. Just so you can, <laughs> right. Just so you can let our fans know, are you going to reveal who you're cheering on tonight? Are you going to make any predictions? Oh, I'm Patriots all the way. I mean, I. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, I get a lot of flack for, you know, being a California guy, Pats fan. But, hey, I'm Patriots all the way. This should be interesting because by the time this is uploaded, you're either going to look uh, very foolish or uh, look like a hero. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> thanks to all the listeners uh, who've been tuning in. We're over the 3,000 mark now, so that's brilliant. Keep hitting those subscribe buttons if you're a first-time listener. Let's get up to the 4,000 quicker than we did between two and three uh talking of which thanks for all your comments that have been coming in both uh, both positive and negative it's always great to see what you think of the show and obviously ro and i will try our best to incorporate anything that we think can make it better so before we start as we always do we, we talk about some other guys out there doing good stuff on the podcast uh promoting the impact brand those kind of things and yeah we just want to give a shout out to the Hillcast who, uh, yeah, if you haven't tuned into their show before, give them a listen. Uh, they, they review Impact each week, uh, and they do some good work over there. Uh, also, uh, a friend of the show, Andre Corbeil. Check him out on Twitter, uh, and it's at symbol Andre Corbeil. Corbeil spelt C-O-R-B-E-I-L-L, I believe. Ro will correct me if I'm wrong. 1L is 1L. <laughs> uh, 1L. There you go. Every week. Every week's the same. All right. So, yeah, uh, last week we had uh, a bit of a mixed opinion, uh, Ro and myself, on this. And uh, looking at the comments from last week's show, it did seem that most people agreed with Ro that Genesis was a fantastic last taping of uh, the Ottawa tapings. Uh, this week, we're straight into the show, uh, following on from that with the new regime. This is it now, folks. This What you saw this week is the direction that they're going to be going on. So before we get into the matches and everything, what do you think of the show overall? Yeah, I thought it was a great follow up uh, following Genesis just because, you know, like I was stated in the previous Impact review, you know, a lot of times when you get a last set of tapings, it kind of just feels like it's mailed in because everyone's looking forward to the new regime, you know, new set of tapings and whatnot. But this was a great follow up. I thought it was solid. I mean, there is one little minor gripe and, you know, we'll get into it. But as far as that, you know, it was great. And I know you had stated it was something that you don't necessarily like. And I don't know if this is what they're going for moving forward. But it seems just if I'm going based off of this show that they're going more towards uh, more wrestling and less, you know, backstage, you know, a lot of talking segments. Yeah, absolutely. And and we will get into each of the matches as we go along. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, my overall opinion of it is, is exactly as you said, that it did seem wrestling heavy. And, and this show, to me, it was it wasn't that exciting. It, there was nothing wrong with it. There was, there was nothing poor in it, but it wasn't that exciting. Nothing really made me, you know, stop doing other things like playing on my phone while whilst watching it. And uh, that's usually a sign of a bad show, but it wasn't a bad show. So it, it was a strange feeling for me. It didn't feel like this was the first night of new tapings, you know, because usually you get that excitement the first night that something big's happening and obviously something big happened in the main event, but it, it just didn't have that excitement. And I also thought that the crowd seemed pretty dead at points as well. I don't know if you picked up on that. No, they seemed engaged. I mean, it's normally the first, you know, first uh, episode of, you know, set of the tapings. It, they're usually always engaged. I'm mean, The one thing that I did notice compared to, I want to say, I don't know if it was Ottawa, but the audio sounded better on as far as, far as on TV because that was one thing I remember they were showing uh, the fans. Uh, it might have been the Ottawa tapings where they're showing the fans. The fans look so engaged yet it didn't come across well on TV. So it sounded like the audio as far as for the viewer watching on television. You know, you could. I, I mean, I at least got the vibe that they were. You know, the fans were really into it. Well, it, it looked that way, but th there were some matches, uh, particularly the first two where I, I just felt that it was really quiet in the audience. And as you say, it's the first show of the block of taping, so usually people are more engaged in it. And it just seemed strange. It just seemed off to me. But anyway, um, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, let's dive into the matches. And uh, we kicked off with a mystery man. Who could it be if only there was internet spoilers to tell us? Uh, a mystery man walking towards uh, with uh, the commentators, speculating as to who it can be. 
So that was the kickoff, and then uh, we had a recap of all of last week's matches. And that's one thing I did want to say that I think it's Kevin Kelly, isn't it, who does all the the, the graphics and the the images. And there was a new set of images for the for the shows this week. I think Sullivan we... is. I think that's his name. Kevin Kelly is the announcer that uh, rumored to come on board. But uh, you talking about Kevin Sullivan? Kevin Sullivan. Sullivan. Yeah, absolutely right. So Kevin Sullivan, you're quite right. Uh, sorry, I don't know what my brain was thinking there. Uh, yeah, but yeah. So I, I thought the package, uh, the video packages were very good, and uh, they were through all the night. And the recap to begin with, before we got into Matt Sadal versus Falabar, I thought was was good. Um, so let's get into that match. Uh, I'm going to start on this one because I've got some opinions on it. I think Falabar is brilliant. I really like him. Um, and some of the things he does, like hitting his head, the crowd seemed to love him. The crowd to really seemed to, to get into him. And although the match, uh, it, you know, went a bit long, I thought that there were some bits in it that, that were really funny, such as uh, the bit where he kind of rolled over the top of him. I've never seen that move before, but that was quite amusing. But I really enjoyed it. I thought I thought it was a good way to kick off the show. Yeah, uh, as far as follow ball, I'll say... You know, this was a guy six months ago who was booked as just pure comedy. And that's why I've always said with Impact's creative, I trust them that, that they're able to take a wrestler that's been misutilized or underutilized, I'm sorry. And they're able to, you know, if they get behind him enough, you know, make him seem credible. The one thing that Fa has, Falaba has going for him is, you know, the, he, the crowd, the crowd likes him. He's a fan favorite. I mean, I kind of wish... You don't hear it as much, but and I recommend fans check out when he uh, came out for the Gauntlet of Gold match where there was that uh, sequence where all you heard were the fans chanting, bah, bah, like he was over. So um, it's good to see that they're finally capitalizing on it. As far as this match, um, you know, normally when you see participants, you know, a guy of follow ball size versus a guy of Matt Seidel size, I mean, you're thinking Seidel has no shot. And I was interested to see how they were able to work this match. And, you know, they had a, a stellar match. You know, Falaba was able to get a lot of offense in. Like, I think that's the most offense I've seen him get in a match since he's been in impact. And, uh, you know, Seidel as well, too. And there was points in the match, I want to say the final sequence, where it looked like Falaba was going to pull up the upset and win the grand championship. But unfortunately, he uh, fell off the rope and Seidel was able to hit the shooting star press to retain the grand championship but um nicely put together match and I like what they're doing with follow ball and hopefully they continue uh using them in this manner moving forward yeah it, it was good and even when you thought oh, Seidel's rolled over the top and is going to get the power bomb he, he couldn't get that so it was a good big man versus small man match and uh, and they played well it was good chemistry and do you know what I, I don't know what you do with someone like with follow ball because he's obviously over with the crowd the way he's been booked so far, you just don't get the feeling he's ever going to get a big title, po- uh, you know, title pusher in, in any of the divisions, which is a bit of a shame because he is a good guy. But he's what's the word I'm looking for? He's, he's you know, he's a guy who's always going to be in that mid card to help put on good matches with with some other people. A bit like Congo Kong, you know, you can't really imagine him ever being anything other than a monster in the mid card. Um, but yeah, it was good. And, and the shooting star press. I've got to say, you know, how many times have we seen it now? But it still looks brilliant when he does it. Um, yeah, that's, thing- a, that's a funny that I just want to make a comment on that. It's funny because, you know, the shooting star press, when I first learned about it, I was uh, I learned it off of a video game and I seen a wrestler, Billy Kidman, doing it. And if you've ever seen Kidman do it, he does it. It looks all lazy and sideways. So then over the years following, you know, wrestling and seeing other people do it, you see somebody like Seidel and even uh, Andrew Everett, the way that they're just able to do it effortlessly is just it's crazy. It's amazing to see. It's, it's the same with Ishimori. We talked about this before, um, who incidentally was missing from the show this week. Uh, you know, the move actually looks like it hurts. Some of these guys, like Johnny Impact, he does these crazy moves, and they don't look like they hurt. They just look like, right. uh, you know, he's just doing it for a show. Whereas the shooting style press by Matt and, and also Ishimori's uh, 450, they look like powerful, impactful moves that could finish someone off. So, yeah, well, well played, and I thought it was a really good match. And I, I actually wouldn't mind if we saw these guys go at it again, you know, if they build some kind of storyline with it. The, the, the only thing that I think holds Falabar back a bit is that, I don't know what he's like on the mic. Can, can he talk? Um, I, I don't know. Have we ever heard a, a promo? I think maybe we have. Yeah, we, we haven't heard broken. anything. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah we haven't heard anything. I, I think, you know, with him, you know, I, I think his ceiling, I mean, we, we don't know. Like, I hate to limit guys an impact i mean i know not everyone's gonna be world uh championship heavyweight championship material but i mean i could see him being a mid-card champion you know or tag team champion at least i think though for him what you know maybe down the road i mean right now you know he had he's a, a fan favorite so i guess you keep him like that but maybe down the road you get him a, a mouthpiece you know he he seems like a guy that would have some kind of manager you know, speaking on his behalf, and then, you know, he just goes and dominates. But one thing, and uh, I don't know if you caught it in this match, but we've seen a, a slow kind of hill turn with uh, Matt Seidel. You know, just some, some little bits and pieces. So that should be interesting moving forward. Yeah, they, they also kind of uh, intimated that he had a new spiritual advisor that's already paying dividends. So, yeah, I think I think you're quite right that they're building on that. And it's good, you know, that they're throwing these little things in there. For, for the tapings. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on for from this match. Um, but oh, actually, I, I was going to actually comment what you said there about a tag team. I think that would suit Falabar down to the ground. You know, get someone who's a bit more charismatic on the mic to work with him, and then he doesn't need to talk, but he can still you know get the crowd going. A, a bit like what they're doing with Jimmy Jacobs and Congo Kong uh, is it the other op- alternative, or even creating um, a, a stable of those two. That would be interesting. Two massive guys. That, you know, I, it most probably wouldn't be a match you'd want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> but it's <is> interesting. <laughs> anyway, OK, so moving on. Eli Drake and Chris Adonis uh, heading into the arena. They were talking about uh, how he's going to have a bit of a celebration after his last match uh, at Genesis. Uh, then we went to my favourite part of the whole show. And uh, going back to, you know, my what I like from wrestling is uh, are the bits backstage, the funny bits, the scenes. We had the cult of Lee. Uh, Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley talking backstage. I thought this promo was brilliant. I loved it. Uh, any thoughts on it? It was great. Um, it looks like, or at least the vibe that I got is they're going on with a tag team. And I like that because I liked, you know, I, I liked the association of Conley with Lee, but I didn't want him to stay as a lackey forever. So it, if they will do move forward with a tag team, it gives Conley an opportunity to, you know, not only do something, but potentially have an opportunity to hold some gold himself it's good as well you know that they they highlighted the fact that they're moving on from the exhibition so they can do something together uh but there, there was just the one line where he, he said you know what am i the best set in the world or something like that and he said you know having a rock hard body uh, it, just, it had me in stitches <laughs> absolutely had me in stitches i i think these guys can go a long way I, and they remind me and i think they could turn into like another bad influence you know, that comedy tag team match, you know, which do things which, uh, you know, just just play, not play to the crowd, but, you know, just are really, really good and entertaining. So I hope they kind of go in that way. And even like the Hawaiian shirt look, you know, something a bit different. Anyway, so, um, yeah, moving on from that, we had then KM versus Lashley, which I don't mind them having this match, but it seems to me that it's been done very quickly. This is something that they could have built to, I, I felt. You know, because obviously they had it last week where, you know, the, the shenanigans at the end of it and the disbanding of America's top team, I'm guessing, as, as has been rumoured. But I just feel like this match happened too soon. I think they needed a bit more build, either backstage segments, you know, building to, you know, uh, a feud next week. I, I don't know if you had any thoughts on, on the build to it, as opposed to the match. You know, it just seemed, yeah, it did seem abrupt, but... I mean, I it didn't bother me too much because, you know, as we know, Lashley will be departing soon. I don't know when his, you know, sometime some part of these tapings, you know, that'll, you know, they'll eventually write him off. But, you know, with the match, man, uh, this was uh, the best I've seen KM. And in part, you know, he was able to get a lot of offense in and he was facing a, you know, credible opponent. And um, I thought Lashley really made him look good. I will say with the KM character moving forward, I'd like to see him kind of reduce, um, you know, chime at the fans at every little bit. You know, I mean, it's not that it's it bothers me so much, but it's just, you know, character progression, you know. It, but uh, as far as the match, man, it, 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 was, it was great. Um, Lashley really made KM look good in this and hopefully, you know, moving forward, they're able to use KM to this type of capacity and, you know, not make him look like a joke like they've had in uh, previous months. I think he said something quite apt there, you know, when 
KM does talk to the audience a lot and shouts through the match and, and does things like that. I, I like it. I personally do like it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's also noticeable with Laurel Van Ness. She does it a lot as well. And it's something that I think is quite good. It does highlight sometimes, though, that the crowd is so quiet, the fact that they do it. Um, but yeah, that's true. That, that, that's a way. That's I guess that's a uh, positive, too. So I, I didn't even look at it like that. That's good. But but the other the other thing as well is that it's almost house showy. It's the kind of thing that you'd imagine would happen at a house show. Is it right for telly? I think you're right. I think they could play on that fact, though. You know, that if they had someone like Dan Lambert and saying, look, you know, you had a good match against Lashley, but you're playing to the crowd too much and almost use that as a storyline to try and train him up and, you know, start ignoring, you know, the crowd, do your own thing and, and build him into a top contender. I thought the match was excellent. As he said, KM looked really good in this match. And, you know, there's nothing before suggested that he, he's a, a contender, but he held his own against Lashley and, uh, you know, the match could have gone either way. I personally would have liked to seen, I think, KM win this one with, with a bit of interference from, you know, from someone from America's top team because it's kind of killed the momentum a little bit for KM. But I'm saying that, we don't know what happens next week. You know, you might get it back, you might come out and, and uh, make Lashley lose next week. So we'll see where it goes. But overall, I thought it was a really good match. OK, um, we then had a bit of uh, Park and Park with Jimmy Jacobs and Joseph uh, Park uh, up next. So this segment, what, what, what do you make of this? You know, I just take this whole thing in. I thought... And I mean, maybe we'll see, but it's, it seems just to set up Abyss versus Congo Kong. Um, I mean, if that's it, the case, then fine. I really think that with this program, the person who they should be trying to get over are the two people should be Congo Kong and Chandler Park. Because, you know, we know with, you know, Joseph Park, he, you know, even though he, he they show him on the screen, he's more in a backstage role nowadays. So, to set up Abyss versus Congo Kong, I mean, it's not something that I'm really looking forward to. But, I mean, I understand if you're trying to put Congo Kong over the monster as a monster. But I, I like to see Chandler Park get a, a rub from this, too, as well. I'll tell you what I'd like to see from this. And, and I don't – I'm not – I haven't read, read the spoilers. So if it happens, this is purely a guesswork. But I, I don't think it does happen. But – it would be interesting to see that they're trying to get Abyss to, to reappear to face Congo, Congo Kong, but for somehow it, it turns into Chandler Park is an Abyss-like character. Like it's a family trait, you know, that they've all got, a, all the parks have got a monster in him. Uh, I think that might be an interesting thing, you know, they keep pushing Joseph, but it's actually Chandler Park who, who comes to the wrong as, as Abyss's half-brother. I don't know. Yeah, that, that'd be crazy. That would. That'd be interesting, too, as well. But you're quite right. I think Chandler Park and Konga Kong are the two that need to be, you know, going for getting something out of this. You know, Abyss, he's good for a little pop. But let's face it, what was his last match? It was against Grado, which was terrible. Before that, it was, <laughs> before that it was against Steiner, wasn't it? And Josh Matthews. So let's face it, he, he's not actually the guy these days uh, that you, you, you're pinning a good match on, is he? Right. <laughs> So, uh, on to Laurel Van Ness uh, turning up outside the ring next. Um, yeah, this was well, nothing segment, really. Um, unless you've got anything to comment on it, I'm going to move on. Uh, then into more backstage stuff about Lashley saying that he's going to be doing both going forward. Uh, and then uh, Eddie Edwards getting uh, the cold shoulder from him. Um, once again, building towards his future, which... Bearing in mind, most of us know what's happening and he's going. It seems strange that after saying he's going, now turning around and saying he's not, uh, that they're building towards uh, he's staying and resting when he doesn't actually do it. But there you go. Uh, we'll see. Right. The next one is, I thought, one of the better matches of the night, if not the best of the match of the night. Laurel Van Ness versus Kira Hogan. Before I talk about this match, um, one of the comments from last week's Impact review that was left on um, YouTube for us was they thought that Laurel Van Ness was a pretty sloppy wrestler. And I'm one of the people who's been saying I think she's actually really good in the ring. What do you make of her as, as a wrestler? I mean, she's not... I don't think she's horrible, but it's not... Like, it's just standard standard matches. I mean, I've you know seen enough of her work where, you know, it's good. There, there, I haven't seen that one match with her. It's like, wow, that was just... You know, it just blew me away. You know, just just standard. And I mean, that could probably be in part too. I mean, what has she worked outside of standard matches and impact? 
you know, I, I can't recall her working any, you know, when they, I don't think she would participate in the ladder match that the knockouts had. She hasn't worked any big matches, you know, when you think about it. And it's crazy that she got it, you know, albeit, you know, her putting, you know, asking for her release. She really hasn't gotten her big push up until now. You know, this whole, her whole impact tenure, you know, whether it was, when she was doing the rich girl, you know, Bridezilla, you know, she just really had standard matches. So um, to say sloppy, I don't think she's sloppy. I mean, I think, I don't know, maybe where people resort uh, when they refer to sloppiness, maybe because of that curb stomp move. I think there's times it, it looked like she did it just looked horrible. But I think that's that more has to do with the move itself. Like, I think that's just a hard move to execute right as well as take. But um, as far as sloppiness, I mean, she's fine. I mean, but just nothing that has really stood out to me with her see to me it's the other way i i, I think she's excellent and I, I don't know what it is I, I there's nothing that she does that makes me think do you know what she, you know wow but she, she has almost like um i suppose if she was a, a male wrestler it's that kind of that, that brawling hardcore style that she seems to have to her you know the moves that she does and those kind of things and i, I just really enjoy her in the ring I, I think she's excellent and every one of her matches you know that she's had not there's been many i've i've really thought has been very very good so I, I don't know maybe i'm seeing that things that other people aren't seeing but once again i enjoyed this this match and and i suppose the main thing to take out of this one was the debut of um kira hogan i couldn't think of a certain, the first name then i knew it was hogan i couldn't think of a first name yeah so kira hogan she looks good i was i was impressed good opening debut although uh she for a lot of it was getting pushed around she didn't have much offense uh, i still thought she was very good yeah, a great way to debut somebody. I mean, I know you could say, oh, well, Ali came down to interfere, but that was good because that, you know, progresses the feud between Ali and LVN. But I thought how, how she, uh, the Kira Hogan debut, it was excellent. Now she's getting a title shot next week. I mean, <laughs> you know, how often do you see that somebody de debut, win their match, and then get a title shot? You know, normally it's the other way around, but that's here nor there. But it just comes to show you, you know, when we see some of these departures and it might suck for some impact fans because, you know, maybe they had a liking to a particular wrestler, but that opens up the door for somebody else. So I think that's something to look forward to in these uh, ongoing set of tapings where, yeah, we might be getting departures, but we're getting arrivals even of talent who've been signed. But, you know, we're waiting for them to make their debut because I know Kira Hogan, that was one of the ones that. You know, we were like, well, when is she going to debut? Because the knockouts division, it was so thin. And I mean, it's thin now because you have a couple injuries as well. So um, I thought it was great. But the key thing is just moving forward, what they do with her. And, and that can go for anybody. You know, you bring somebody on board. How are you utilizing them? And they just got to be creative because only having one show, I mean, you could only fit so many people on the show. So but great debut for Kiara Hogan. One thing I did notice about this match, which bothered me quite a few times during the night, was I thought the camera work was a bit sloppy. Um, quite a few times it seemed almost guerrilla style, you know, that the camera was shaking all over the place. We barely saw the roll up. It, you know, it just came out of nowhere. Uh, and it was apparent again in this match that although I've talked about Kevin Sullivan and the backstage you know, pictures and the, the, the promos and those kind of things, it is good. I think that the camera work during some of the matches has been quite poor. And this one was one of the worst I can see, remember in a long time. It felt like quite a lot was too close up on the wrestlers. So you couldn't see what was happening. And there was bits that they just blatantly missed. So, uh, but you're right. Uh, for the match itself, for the performers, you know, very, very good debut. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see what where she goes with this one. And hopefully she won't be another Ava Story or uh, what was what the other one? I can't remember. There was about two or three of them who uh, have been pretty much jobless and saved joints. So that's good that they're, they're giving us something to do already. Okay, more Mystery Man stuff. Who is it? Who is it? I, I just don't know. Who is this guy? Uh, so <laughs> yeah, once, once again, he's wandering around. Um, and uh, then we go to the backstage segments with Mackenzie Mitchell talking to Alberto and EC3. <laughs> what do you make of this one? Um, you know, one thing I was just like, it seems like all of El Patron's promos have been targeted as far as I should be champion. And, you know, he's failed on three different occasions. So I would like to see him, you know, talk about something else. But you know, I understand he he's portrayed as a big time guy. So the big time guy is supposed to be the champion. 
the one thing I'll say, and it's ironic, I don't know if this was just how it was or just a coincidence, but in some ways, EC3 looked like a joke here. And what, what I'm saying is, I think when EC3 went to extend his hand and El Patron kind of just looked at him like, you know, who are you? You know, kind of like he looked down to him. And it's just, I don't know, the way I just took it is just like, you know, we know EC3 showed up in another company and signed with another company. And, you know, if this is the way that they're writing them off, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. But, yeah, it just it, EC3, he just he seemed like an afterthought, at least to me, in this uh, promo. I, I get a feeling that, you know, with a lot of things, the way things are written down on paper can be taken different ways. You know, text has no tone. And I've got a feeling that he could have played exactly that same script a different way and not looked like a joke. My personal guess is that EC3 played it that way because he knew he was leaving and because he really didn't care anymore. That, that's the way I read it. But you're quite right. You know, it, it, it seemed a bit odd and he was playing it for jokes. But I think he at this point of, of, of where he was at Impact, he was just thinking, I'm out of here. I'm just doing what they want. I'll make it look crap. It was a bit like, I don't know if you've ever seen the match where I think it was HBK versus Hogan. And HBK yeah, yeah, oversold yeah, everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did like a swanton bomb on the floor, the floor. I think I forgot he they threw, uh, Shawn Michaels had fell out of the ring and, and he oversold it so much where he did or he did some kind of somersault, but it was it was crazy. And you know it, you, when you see uh, at least somebody of that caliber you know act like that, it's like wow, you know. But you know, and you know maybe you're right with EC3, he mailed it in. But to be fair, I kind of felt like he's been mailing it in, you know, since they, you know, took him out the world title scene. And not to make this as you know getting on EC3 because I enjoyed him his time in Impact, but I mean this is a guy who you know benefited a lot when you talk about the old regime and this is stemming back from Dixie. So to kind of just see him, you know, he was disgruntled about you know working down the card and then just kind of just mail it in. You know, you, you, you kind of don't want people like that. You kind of want people who who are going to, you know, they get their push. And then when they're trying to get somebody else over, they're willing to work with other people, work up and down the card. You know, I, I think he would have probably got the championship again had they there not been so many changes. But, you know, yeah, you're probably right. He probably was just checked out like, hey, look, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. And, you know, he had, you know, the other company on his mind. So moving on, we had uh, LAX next, and Conan did his usual stick. He needs to get some new material there, guys. Uh, but it was still good, and uh, OVE came out. Uh, Sammy Callahan, excellent on the mic. These two teams, you know, it's good to see that, you know, they may be showing a bit of respect. And I, I like the way that this this whole angle went. I really thought it was very good. Uh, although, as the commentators to keep on pointing out, you know, what bigger fish to fry are there that, that OVE are talking about? I'm guessing we'll find out, but it did seem something that, you know, if if you're a tag team and you've got bigger fish to fry than the world champions, then I, I don't know what you're getting at. So, uh, it, it didn't seem to make much sense. Uh, and the only thing that, that was great about it was obviously the Cult of Lee coming in, uh, doing a, a, a run-in at the end. Uh, are they working with OV? I think guessing that's the, the big question mark over that one, or is it something that they're just doing themselves to make a statement? Uh, if it gets more Cult of Lee on the telly, I really don't care. Just do whatever they need to do to get them on TV because they are gold. What are your thoughts? You know, one worry that I have with all of this, like I like that, you know, they did the respect angle because, like I said, this was one of the best views Impact has had in some time. And I even like that you have some new challengers coming on board with the Code of Lee. I think that's going to that should be excellent and provide us some not only excellent matches, but some promos, you know, for whatever promos they have or do conduct. But I worry about OVE moving forward, how they'll be utilized, because I could kind of see a shift and change where maybe they feature uh, Callahan more, like doing a lot of single matches. So I hope OVE doesn't get lost in the shuffle, shuffle because I think they've done enough and earned the right to be, you know, one of the top two tag teams in the company. So I really I hope that they still remain in the mix. I mean, they don't necessarily have to win the belts you know within the next coming months but they should always be in position to be a strong contender for the impact tag team titles so i just hope they don't they don't get lost in the shuffle but with that said i'm looking forward to the code of lee and L lax feud you're absolutely right and you know it's always one of those dangers when you've got such a thin division you can't have the same guys fighting over and over but i mean if cult of lee is going to be the next challengers to lax 
who could he feud with? There isn't anyone else on the roster. So I think you're quite right that Sammy Callahan most probably will be featured more as a singles wrestler. But uh, I'm guessing maybe we'll get some uh, explosion matches or something like that happening for OV. But yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, it could very well be that the feud continues. It's just an, another element that's been added into it now. Or even OV go after the Cult of Lee to try and, um, and you know, get another shot. Who knows? But anyway, we'll see where that goes. And uh, it all looks good. Right. Uh, next, Moose and Johnny Impact next stage. My word, this was terrible. This was the worst segment of the night by, me, by a million miles. Johnny Impact is awful. Don't let that guy down, Mike. He's, ter- <laughs> he's terrible. Do you know, even in Spanish, he was awful. He, he, <laughs> he's terrible. He's so cheesy. I like him, but he's terrible. Anyway, that was my views on it. What did you think? Yeah, I have too much to think, think about it. I, I will say, I think, and I could see them, you know, I guess it would be copying, you know, his former employer, but I could see a scenario where, down the road, Johnny Impact turns heel and changes his name once again. I mean, this guy, he I don't know if he has a record for most name changes, but he's at least in the top five, I'm sure. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, I didn't think too much of it. Um, I liked Moose being able to you know, say what he needed to say. I, I think that was just my, my, my focus was on Moose because getting the big win over Lashley, what are they doing with him? And, um, you know... I like I like that he was a part of this match, but yeah, I, I I get you with Impact. His promos, man. I mean, and you know they it's been well documented. You know him as a face. You know he can do it as long as he's not talking on the mic. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next up, we had the weirdest choice for a GWN flashback: EC3 versus Drew McIntyre. Two guys who are now in NXT. It was like an advert for WWE, this one. I don't get it. Uh, out of all the stuff they could have shown, why did they show this? Um, crazy. But, uh, yeah, uh, anything to add? Yeah, they. I wish they would stop doing it, but I get it. They're trying to capitalize on that popularity, and maybe they don't have enough material. But they, they need to stop doing that. But then, too, here here's another thing, too. What if, and I, mean, I guess, you know, we knew uh, Galloway, you know, he's been gone from the company, but... You know, what if they, you know, they bring a clip, you know, from an old match, just say recent of last year, and the participants, they're on the roster now, but just say, you know, they ask for the release. So when it's when it's uh, uh, aired on TV, then we're, it looks like we're getting a match of people no longer with the company. So it, it's just kind of one of those things. I just think they were just trying to show, you know, the best of like, hey, this guy was there. And if anything, what it just it it told me was I remember like impact making Galloway a big deal um I don't know what he's doing over there um I think last thing I heard he was in the developmental so I mean more power to him but you know just come to show you you know some of these guys they come to impact and impact is giving these guys opportunities you know where in other companies they're not getting those same opportunities and Galloway was a big deal but um he's no longer with us and neither is EC3 well you just said there that uh you don't know if it's because they're short of material, but they're, I mean, they've got 15 years worth of material there. Surely they can find something. I mean, we haven't seen Christopher Daniels, you know, I know he's in Ring of Honor. Uh, you know, we could have any of those classic matches. You know, it doesn't have to feature the guy who's just shown up on NXT. So, I mean, there's plenty in there they could show. So, yeah, there's a question for our listeners uh, in the comments below. Let us know. What what would you like to see as uh, the GWN moment of the week? Um, let's hear your thoughts. Right, okay. But it's hard, it, not not to sorry, I just wanted to say I think what makes it hard though too is cuz it seems what they they try to mix it up. They show stuff from the old, you know, TNA and then they try to show stuff that somewhat relevant, so you know, a year ago or two. So I I think though but yeah, once again, there's more than enough um content. Hell, you could even show I I think like one of my favorite matches from last year was a Gauntlet for Gold. Excuse me. I mean, you could show, you know, things like that or people on the roster when, you know, they won the championship. Maybe show Rosemary versus Gail Kim. You could show us various matches like that. You, They, they need to treat this, and, and I'll get more into this when we talk about the main event. One thing I would like Impact to do is don't assume that everyone who's watching is just, just um, Impact fans. You know, kind of um, broadcast something that can appeal to the casual 
people fans that kind of get them on board because you might have people who are watching it for the first second time and you know might not be aware of you know like say they might not have known that Galloway was here and they're looking at like oh what's this guy he's in another company why are they showing this you know so yeah but like you were saying they got more than enough material where they don't have to resort to you know this type of footage I, I would go for if I was going to choose something you know maybe Gail Kim or some Kong or even Gail Kim versus Taron Terrell but the ladder match was fantastic you know something like that that's not that long ago and and both of them were you know bound for glory with no no she just left before bound for glory but in the last six months she's been there so you know that's uh that, that's what I would go for something like that but anyway moving on um we had a, a vignette of Brian Cage. I'll be honest with you, I missed this. I, I don't know how I missed it. Uh, maybe I popped out of the room. But uh, maybe they didn't show it in the UK. I don't know. But what, what did you think of this? I mean, it was just a promo uh, video that he's going to be debuting. I think that's awesome. Um, for people who don't know, he actually is a former tag team partner of uh, Eli Drake. So it'll be interesting to see um, if we see any interactions between those two. Um, but yeah, great, great addition to the Impact roster. Great. Okay, let's move on because uh, I'm conscious of time here as, as time is flying by. So we've got the, well, what was supposed to be the main event, I'm guessing, before obviously the, the facts of life at the end. So we had EC3 and Alberto versus Moose and Johnny Impact. Uh, one thing I noticed about this is uh, Alberto finally took his T-shirt off for a match. That was nice to see. Um, Bit of a weird comment, but there you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, it was just that someone mentioned it uh, last week. I saw. I don't know if it was on one of the the comments on YouTube, but someone said that he never takes his T-shirt off anymore. So, uh, I, do you know, Alberto? I, I know he gets a lot of stick. I think he's a, he's a great addition to the roster. You know, he, he does. He always gives a really good match. You know, and and this once again, he looked really good in it. He, there's an intensity about him, a seriousness that you don't. That's why Johnny Impact bothers me so much. The two of them are such polar opposites. You know, Johnny Impact just seems like yeah, yeah I'm chilled out, man. You know, and here's a crap promo. Whereas Alberto, love him or hate him, he always brings it. Um, and in this match, just before the finish, when he did his is it Tree of Woe? I can't remember what it's called. Where he jumps down and does the double foot stomp, uh, and he caught um, what's his name, uh, Johnny Impact, with the move. It really looked like Johnny Impact smashed his head on that mat. It was the most brutal time I've ever seen that move delivered. And uh, I don't know if he did actually hurt himself, but he did seem to be holding his head at the end. But I thought overall a very good match. Uh, any thoughts on it at all? Uh, I just found this match. It seemed to capitalize off the momentum that Moose uh, had um, beating. Lashley less less impact so that that's just what I took and you know with him getting the pin on uh, El Patron I thought that was well so it'd be interested to see what they do with all four well all three moving forward mm -hmm. absolutely um so after this uh yeah it would be good to see what happens with Moose and uh he finally hit his uh big clothesline to win a match that's a nice novelty <laughs> as well for him uh, we haven't seen that in a while okay uh, yeah, so then we were on to the, the very final section, the uh, facts of Eli Drake's life. Uh, so what did, well, before we move on to obviously him being disturbed, you know, by uh, the man who's still a mystery man before he came in. Um, what did you think of this? Cause I quite enjoyed it. But then again, I, I like Adonis and Drake. It's a shame Adonis is gone, but I, I really like him. Yeah, I found this to be funny. Um yeah, I, I liked it as well, too. Um, well, you know, they're highlighting different things. And it's something that you expect because when you look at the climate as far as the main event scene, you know, Eli has faced everybody. So, you know, for him to be all braggadocious about, you know, being the greatest champion that ever lived, the greatest dresser and, you know, this and that, I mean, it's it's expected. But I, I liked this. One thing that bothered me is that when uh, Austin Aries came out, uh, I was expecting a bigger pop. The crowd didn't seem, they were excited, but, you know, sometimes when you get these debuts, it's like, oh my God. And uh, the crowd didn't seem that surprised. I know it was building to it all night and the way that they were saying, you're the greatest man I ever did this, the greatest man I ever did that. It was kind of leading up to it. But until it actually happened, you know, I would be, because it was, you know, no one knew that this was happening. People had suspicions that you might rejoin at some point, but no one knew. And it didn't seem like the crowd went absolutely nuts. Maybe it was the editing. I don't know. But did you get the same impression? 
You know, I didn't catch that part. I mean, if anything, the thing I did like was I like how they segued into him coming in was uh, when Eli Drake proclaimed that he was the greatest man that ever lived. And then, you know, we all know that's the moniker that Austin Aries, you know, goes under. So, you know, that was that. But that's what I was saying, you know, earlier, what Impact has to do with some of these uh, wrestlers that return to the company or, you know, been away for some time. You got to kind of treat it, you know, for the casual viewer who might be who might not even know who Austin Aries is. So you can't you don't want to always assume like, OK, this guy's coming back. Oh, he's going to just get the pops of all pops. You know, you still kind of have to you know do something where it seems that he's looked at as a big deal. But that, that was just my, my thing with it. OK, now just very quickly moving on to what actually happened. Obviously, Aries came in, uh, challenged him. And Eli said, no, it's not going to happen. And then blindsided him and said, OK, let's go for it. I just have a problem with this. I, I don't mind Austin Aries coming in, winning the title. No problem with that. I don't mind him being involved in the main event scene. He was one of my favourite guys back in the day. And, and interestingly enough, he's on our, he's on the teleconference this week. Uh, if, if any of our listeners do tune into those, uh, you'll hear us on that one. Um, by the way, I interviewed him before. He was awful. He's terrible. He's so full of himself. But as a character on a wrestling show, I think he's great. Um, so I don't mind any of that, but they just made Eli Drake look like such a jobber in this. I mean, he's won through various ways, you know, along, but he's been a good champion, you know, that he's done everything the company's asked for him. And then to basically take two moves off a guy who they beat down with the belt and have both Adonis taken out and then Eli taken out in two moves to lose the title. I just thought that this was a terrible way. They, they, they shouldn't have done this to Eli. I just think it's made his whole reign tainted for me. And it bothers me. Because you know, I like Austin Aries, and, but they should have done this further on down the line. They should have just said, OK, next week. If they come out next week and say, look, that wasn't a title match. You know, it wasn't official. You beat him. Now you get a title match. Fine. But I think we all know that's probably not what's going to happen here. You know, it's tough, man, because I was 50-50 on this because I've been a, you know, strongly against people coming in uh de you know debuting and winning the championship you know let alone the heavyweight championship which by the way if you notice they they were dubbing it the impact world heavyweight championship no more global championship so you know that was something interesting but like i get why they did it because on one end you look at like eli drake has faced you know well he you know he's faced everyone you know, that he could in the main event scene. So there was really no one to face. With that said, having Austin Aries debut, you could have ran something where maybe he attacks Eli, raises the belt up, and then maybe the next two episodes of Impact, you know, we get the actual uh, title match. But, you know, once again, like I said, if I'm a casual viewer and I've been following Impact, just say, for a year, and uh, I don't know who Austin Aries is. I'm looking at this like, oh, God, they just had some guy just come in and just take the belt off of Eli. It's kind of a smack into the face for some. And Austin Aries, like I said, I, I have no problem with him. I think he's good. But, you know, I worry, too, because I just got some news from uh, Big Dog. He was telling me that, that Austin Aries isn't even under contract. So that kind of like, uh, you know, and it's rumored. And, you know, I don't know, just from, you, you know, you can only take so much from the dirt sheets that, you know, and you, I think you even stated yourself that sometimes he's kind of full of himself. And, you know, hopefully we don't have a low key situation where, you know, as long as they're, you know, in the title picture, getting everything that they want, you know, hey, they're, you know, on board. But the moment that you tell them something that they don't like, they check out because we don't need that. So this is kind of. Uh, this is really going to ride on, you know, the new regime, you know, having that much faith in that guy and putting the belt on him right when he debuts. So we just got to see what happens moving forward. I'm guessing that we're going to have Eli for the next four or five shows trying to win it back in some sort, uh, which I think I, I haven't seen any spoilers or anything like that. So this is just pure speculation, you know, but if they're taking it off to put it on Austin Aries in this fashion, it's unlikely down down the road that Eli's going to get the title back in this run. Um, but I just worry, where does Eli go from here after this this kind of program? Uh, Adonis is gone. I don't know. Um, I, I really don't know. Maybe something with 
uh, Alberto, you know, non-title feud. That could be interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing that, but I just really don't know where this goes. And I, I just feel sorry for Eli because I, I think that Impact haven't served him well in his first title run. It, it, it's almost got to the stage where is it as bad as Magnus is? Close to it, you know. And I think that both of them, both Magnus and Andy Lydra, deserve better than, than what they've got in their title run. But we'll see. So, um, yeah, any final comments before we, we, we sign off the show? Yeah, um, just real quick. You know, the the four-sided ring, um, I've seen some people talking about it on social media. It did kind of remind me a little bit of uh, WCW Thunder with the blue ropes. But, you know, it wasn't that big big of a change to me. I thought, you know, it it was an easy transition you know hopefully that's the ring that we're keeping for the foreseeable future because we need consistency but i will say and um bq touched more on this um if you guys haven't heard you know go out, check out the impact launch youtube page where he talks about the departure of jeremy borash um just with any of the these uh departures it's going to be tough you know because since they tape so far in advance and when people ask for the release you you know unfortunately we're gonna have to watch you know, the programming with these people on here. But with Borash, I know some people, you know, everyone had a different opinion. Um, I just look at it like this and not to minimize what he's done for the company because he's, you know, done a lot. But a lot of these people that Impact lose, they haven't lost somebody that really is just kind of like, that's really crippled the company. And the only two people I think if they were to lose and heaven forbid they don't lose him, that it would probably really hurt the company would be a Rosemary and Eli Drake. Cause I think those are the two big faces, but you know, we're, we're just seeing more and more, you know, people that, that were part of the old regimes that had carried on, carried on, carried on, you know, they might not be around much longer. So what we have to do, we have to appreciate who's there, appreciate who's coming on board and get behind them and hope that the new regime is, you know, providing some kind of stability where it's not a revolving door. So, um, but impact's going to be fine. Um, I always believe that. So yeah, that was just my uh, thoughts. I think uh, what, what a nice thought to finish on. Impact's going to be fine. But uh, if it's your first time listening, make sure you hit the subscribe, show us the love and uh, leave us some comments. So if you want us to discuss anything on next week's Impact Review, let us know in the comments and we'll be happy to pick that up. And also the questions that we featured during the show today, you know, what would you like to see on the GWN flashback? Uh, and if there was any other ones, uh, which I can't remember off the top of my head, just drop us a, a note down below. So for this week, I'm Adam. Thank you, Ro. We'll catch you on the flip side. I can't believe I just said that. That was so American of me and I'm British. <laughs> All right. Take okay. care.